Good morning and welcome to my morning rant. This morning I want to talk to you guys about um, the scripture, a principle basically that is all through the Bible. And I know, I've, like I said, I've been a Christian for a mighty long time and I've seen all different types of Christians who are, and how they behave and the things, the madness that they do and call themselves Christians. But we know that the Bible uh, separates that whether you're in the body of Christ or you are in the kingdom of darkness, even when you're in the body of Christ, the Bible tells us and warns us that we ought not be governed by the flesh, we ought to be governed by the spirit. So even as Christians, you and I have a choice by which and how we re, uh, relate to God. And based on that choice, it will dictate the type of relationship that you have with God and with our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I want to take you guys to um, the scripture and then I'm just going to pull out a little piece of it. Again, I'm not taking uh, these uh, uh, pieces and breaking it up to create any kind of uh, dogma that is against the word of God. I try to take principles and show you through the scriptures by bringing additional uh, scriptures to prove that that's a principle by which God requires you and I to behave and to operate once we are here in the kingdom of his dear son. So let's take a look at it. And we see this thing all through the Bible from the beginning to the end, that your relationship with God and my relationship with God is conditional. What do I mean by that? Um, you have to do something. God has to do something. God is not going to do it all except for Jesus did. He did all of it for the redemption plan, the redemption piece that God had put in place. And uh, he and uh, the Holy Spirit, they all agreed upon this way by which they are going to redeem their creation. And Jesus came and fulfill all of it, all that was spoken of by the prophet, where he was born, how he was going to be born, all of these different things, what he would do and so forth. And Jesus came and he declared in uh, Isaiah uh, what he was, what he came for, what is his assignment. And I keep telling you guys that we all have an assignment and it's up to you to find it because God has deposited that inside of you. Actually, I believe that he deposited the inside of you before you came here. And it is your responsibility to, if you will, for a better word, remember what it is. And you remember that by learning how to go and seek God and getting before his space and getting in his his arena or his, um, I call it, the, his uh, state. And he will now guide you. And stir up, the Bible says, lay on hands on each other to stir up the gift that is in you. So the gift is inside of you and I. So it is our responsibility to stir it up, if you will. And that comes about as you and I embark on a journey. I tell people that the uh, personal growth is a part of uh, Christianity because Jesus talks about it, saving of the soul. You have to educate him as to who he is in God and who God is and what God has done. So the principle that I want to take uh, from you uh, from the scripture is draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. And I want to bring to you guys about this reciprocal relationship. And that makes sense. I mean, how would you have a relationship and just one person gives and one person receives all the time without giving. That is not a healthy relationship. In fact, I guarantee you that that relationship at some point will crumble if that individual is simply a taker, a taker, a taker all the time. And we can have that same relationship with God where we're coming, all we're coming to get from him is things, material stuff. But we are not coming to get to know who he is. And the Bible tells us that we grow based on the knowledge that we obtain. And as we uh, obtain knowledge, it tells us that we are able to partake of God's divine nature. He has given to us these precious uh, promises whereby. And so we have to learn how to access them 
by our faith. So this principle about God drawing nigh unto you and you unto him. We know that in Genesis, we remember the story of Adam when uh, God came, Adam fell. He uh, separated himself from God. God kept his appointment with him, says in the cool of the day. And there's some spiritual connotation in that, which I taught about in one other podcast. So we know that God comes even when we are uh, we are at our worst, if you will. And so he is there. He tells us in the scripture, call on me and I will answer you. So there is a reciprocal relationship. He is always ready. He keeps his appointment. And uh, because he keeps his appointment, what does it prove? It proves that he is faithful. And the Bible tells us that um, that when we uh, call on God, he is faithful and just to forgive. So his faithfulness is seen uh, because he hasn't clobbered us on the head because he loves us and he's being faithful. And the Bible tells us that he's there waiting for you to do something. So there's aspects of our behavior that also takes form within this reciprocal relationship. The Bible tells us that if we judge people, God will judge us also accordingly. If we are uh, one of those that are walking by hate and uh, unforgiveness, the Bible tells us that God will not forgive you until you forgive your brother. Because he makes a statement, he says, if you um, can't be kind to your brother who you could see, come on, guys. You know, so we have to um, take on at his word and remember that this reciprocal relationship demands something out of you. It demands your faith, but it demands you participating within that relationship. And one that participate within the relationship, because I remember... um, when I was born again as a young Christian, uh, people would tell me um, all kinds of crazy stuff. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do that. But I find myself, I was doing a lot of things uh, that I wanted to do. One of those was I wanted to get to know God. And so I would be praying a lot. I would be, every place I'd go, I'd be singing and worshiping God and stuff like that. Because as any relationship that is new, you want to, um, you, you want to develop that. You want to uh, make it grow. And so God entertained me and he grew with me and so forth. And I depended a lot on my mother's prayer. You know what I mean? And um, as you grow, God says, it's time to get out. When I was a child, I behave as a child. Now that I am a man, I got to act differently. So I remember um, from my relationship with God that he would speak to me and it was as if it was an audible um, direction. And he, I remember one day I was seeing and dating this girl and um, I came out of my home and I walked out on the patio and I was just sitting there on the patio um, looking at the area. This was in New York, Queens Village to be exact. I'm watching the street and just hanging out. And I've heard within me an audible voice that says, get up, call her, and break up this uh, relationship and get out of it. And uh, I actually looked around and uh, sat there for a little while because, you know, um, uh, you, you know how it is. So I sat there for a little while and I heard the direction again. I got up, Um, I'm going to date myself a little here, and I remember walking to my uh, living room where my the phone, the house phone was, and the house phone was one of those, it was a black circular phone that you had to turn, I know a lot of the young kids don't even know what that looks like, but I am telling you, we had those circular phones, and I remembered the numbers, things that we can't do anymore, because we had, I had in my mind, hundreds of numbers that I would go to a phone booth and call. And uh, I have my cell phone today, the technology, and I barely remember my number. So um, I believe we're getting a little sketchy there, but uh, that's just my opinion. So he, I got up and I started making these phone calls. And I called that girl and I said, look, it's over, man. We are done. And um, I came out of that relationship 
And it was several months later that that particular person um, caused tremendous pain and, and she broke guys up. Their hearts were a mess and just absolutely destroyed it. And uh, I remember uh, that whole situation and could not believe how God reached out and saved me. Another um, incident that uh, um, happened to me, and again, this is a relationship I'm trying to bring to you the point of having this relationship with God, is that he speaks to you. And I remember um, after several days being under the power, if you will, that when I rose up, I would, God, it cued me into people's lives and people's situation, and I would be walking and so forth. And he, I remember we were traveling somewhere, and the Holy Spirit said to me, make a left. I was actually lost. And um, I said, a little prayer, I said, Holy Spirit, you got to help me out. I'm just totally lost. And it was a totally different part of Florida. I had my children in the back, and, and we were all kind of getting a little frustrated. And the Holy Spirit said to me deep inside my voice, and I, and I heard this voice that says, you need to make a left turn, and then began to give me directions as to what to do. And I followed those directions and I arrived at my area. So we see that Jesus tells the disciples, and he in 11, Mark 11, when he talks about praying and moving mountains with your faith and all those kind of stuff, and then he tells them, he says, look, if you don't forget, if you're coming to the Father and you don't forgive your brother, you might as well just pack up, get back to your brother, and uh, seek forgiveness and reconcile. And so this reciprocal relationship, he tells you, judge not, least you shall be judged. So it is important how you behave to each other and how you behave to God. Because as I mentioned to you, um, it takes you and I to work with God. He tells us, for by grace are you saved. And I keep telling you, that is God's responsibility out of this relationship, is that his grace in the Bible tells us that uh, God has surrounded us, his uh, children, with his grace as like a shield. So his grace then protects you and I. But there's another aspect of that scripture. It says, for by grace are you saved. How? By faith, through faith. And so the faith is our responsibility. The grace is God's responsibility. And as God moves and you and I move together and we have this union, this synergy, together we can do great things while we are here on this planet. But I want to remind you that the scripture tells us that you have to draw nigh unto God. That is found in James chapter 4, verses 8. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. And it tells us that you are to cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double-minded people. And that's like you and me, how we behave. But I want to tell you guys something, because I know a lot of us, this is the reason why we don't go to God. So, because we're trying to get perfect before we can get to him, because guess what? We are a mess. My life is a mess. I am doing this. I'm doing that. I'm cussing. I, I, I'm, I mean, I'm wretched. And because I'm wretched, I can't get to God. And that is one of the lies that the enemy uses to keep you and I from God, because he tells us, call on me and I will answer you. And he says, he says, even though your sins are like this, I'll clean you up. So God wants to clean you up. So the messier you are, as I mentioned to you, he showed up for his meeting with uh, Adam, but Adam didn't show up. And he shows up for his meeting with you too, but you're not showing up because you're thinking that you're not worthy enough. And because of that mindset, that um, uh, state that you're in, it keeps you, that mindset keeps you in that state and you're not able to experience God's forgiveness God's cleansing power and the power of the Holy Spirit. And so you are going to be stuck in your sin for 30, 40 years, and then you find yourself at the end of your days wanting to know what happened because you've been trying not to uh, get to God because you're so dirty, you're so messy. But I'm telling you, if you could have done it on yourself, then why in the world did Jesus have to come and go through all that mess? It's just that's a, uh, a God that is absolutely out of his mind that he would do that to his son if I could handle it and uh, prepare and get myself together so that I can come before him. So it's a 
that mindset that you have is absolutely garbage. Get it out of your mind and begin to go before God. The Bible tells us that as you and I go, he tells us that we draw nigh unto him. He will draw nigh unto you. So um, it tells us in the scripture, if you look at the word, it's really cool. He says that he's even near to God. He says, but it is good for me to draw near to God. See, that I need to come into his proximity, if you will. I have put my trust in the Lord that I may declare all thy works. So you and I are responsible to come into his proximity. How do we come there? Uh, we come there by calling on him, confessing our sins, dropping it at his feet. You remember I told you guys, even Jesus had to surrender. And that place of surrendering is the beginning of your journey. Because Jesus Christ resisted in that garden. He resisted to the point of he was sweating blood. He didn't want to be separated from his father. And then in his crying, in his brokenness, in his prayer, he realized that I got to do this because I love my father and I love my brothers and sisters that are coming because the Bible says he hung up on that cross because he saw you and I. And so I want to tell you guys, this proximity is based on you. God took away all the stuff that will keep you from there. That mindset, as I mentioned, that perception of that you have to clean yourself up is a foolish unbiblical, unnecessary. That's how the enemy keeps you, a lot of people, from God because they try to clean themselves up. If you could have cleaned yourself up, you would have done it a long time ago. So stop this crazy behavior. Get before God. Humble yourself, the Bible says, and begin to enjoy your reciprocal relationship because God says, I'll make some exchanges for you. From you know, When you're weak, I'll give you my strength. Your joy, I'll give you joy. When you 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 need, um, when you lack, I'll I'll handle it. I'll you know we'll have this reciprocal relationship. And so I want to invite you guys, all of you that are listening to this podcast, tell your friends, tell your family that you uh, they ought to come to God and have this reciprocal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and with God the Father, and it will change their destiny. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. It also tells you and I that we must walk by faith and not by sight.